from Shemad Bhagavatam. Canto 10, Chapter 69, entitled Narda Visits Krishna's Palaces. Text number 26. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Asvair Kajai Ratai Kvapi Asvair Kajai Ratai Kvapi Vicharam Tangadagrajam Vicharam Tangadagrajam Quaj chit jayanam paryanke Quaj chit jayanam paryanke Stuyamanam chavandi bi Stuyamanam chavandi bi Ashvadai Gajai Ratha Kwapi Vichad Hantanga Dagrajam Kwachit Janam Paryanke Stuyamanam Chavandi Bi Ashvair Gajai Ratha Kwapi Vichad Hantanga Dagrajam Quachit Janam Paryanke Stuyamanam Chavandibi Ashraya Kajai Ratai Kwapi Vichad Hantanga Dagrajam Vachit Chananam Parihanke Stuyamanam Chavandidi Ashwaya Kachaira Taigapi Ashvaya Gajaira Tivapi Vicharam Tamga Dagrajam Quachit Jananam Bharyanke Stuyamanam Chavandivi Ladies, Ashvaya Gajaira Taivapi, Vicharan Tamga Dagracham, Ashvai on horses. Kajai on elephants. Ratai 
on chariots. Kwa api somewhere. Vicharantam riding. Gada Agrajam Lord Krishna. The elder brother of Gada. Kwachit somewhere. Shayanam lying. Paryanke on his bed. Duyamanam being praised. Cha and Vandibihi by bards. Translation. In one place, Lord Gadagraja was riding on horses, elephants, and chariots. In another place, he was resting on his bed while bards recited his glories. Purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti points out that riding on horses and elephants is a noon activity, whereas one lies down during the latter part of the night. Hmm. Om Ajnana Timiranda Shagananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Navitam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Kuroti Vacha Lampangum Langai Te Gadim Yat Kripa Taraham Bande Shri Guru Dinataranam Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram So <coughs> in this Leela Narada Muni has gone to Dwarka and he's observing the Lord in his various palaces. Krishna married 16,108 wives and they all lived in the Dwarka. <laughs> so uh, this is a very amazing thing for us to imagine. Today uh, hardly a man can keep one wife what to speak of 16,108 wives. Uh, so people in general and even so-called educated persons, they claim that these pastimes are mythology. And <laughs> that they weren't really historical events. But we learn from the Acharyas, that this is not true. Uh, the pastimes of Krishna were not invented by someone just to uh, give us some moral instruction, to explain something that we don't understand, they say. Mm. Some stories develop so that it fulfills the human nature to know the origin of everything. So therefore these stories develop. But this is not the version of the uh, saintly persons, or the acharyas. These are historical events that happen. As long as we're in the conditioned state, we cannot understand. How can someone in the bodily concept of life who's thinking that this uh, body made up of the uh, bile, mucus, and air uh, has something to do with me. Uh, someone who's conditioned, they think that I am this body. Uh, forgetting their real identity as eternal spirit souls. Satchit Ananda. So, a person in such a condition as identifying with the uh, material body, how can they understand their own identity as spirit soul? What to speak of the identity of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Therefore, a purification has to take place. Uh, that purification comes about by hearing the pastimes of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord is so kind that he comes to this material world in various incarnations to display his 
wonderful pastimes so that persons can hear about and chant about those marvelous uh, pastimes and in this way become purified. Purified means that one's state or condition becomes elevated. And that's the process of devotional service. To elevate oneself, to not remain in ignorance. The animals are in ignorance. No one expects the animal to understand things. We see some, Prabhupada explains that there's stoplights on the road. And that's for the human beings. Nobody expects the hogs, dogs, camels, or asses to understand red light means to stop, green light means to go. Because they're animals. They don't have sufficient intelligence. In this way, persons who are in the bodily concept of life, they're no better than animals. And someone may say, oh, how can you say that? This person has PhD, MBA. They're doing so many uh, innovative things in, uh, in information technology like coding. But no, regardless, if they are steeped in the concept that their happiness will come by sense gratification, Srimad Bhagavatam says, they're no better than a cow or an ass. So one has to become elevated. Regardless of one's material condition, uh, the very intelligent innovative scientist or the beggar in the street still have to come to this understanding that I'm not this body, that I'm the eternal spirit soul. And there's only one way that you can do that. Right? And that is to approach the pure devotee of the Lord. And when the pure devotee of the Lord uh, has favorable inclinations towards the conditioned soul, then Krishna from within the heart of the living entity will enlighten him about his real identity as the eternal spirit soul. And when the living entity becomes to the platform of understanding through spiritual knowledge, through service and inquiry from the uh, Lord's devotee, then he become, comes to the platform of human being. Before that, the living entity is not considered human being. The goal of the human form of life is to obtain freedom from the cycle of birth, death, old age, and disease in this material world. These are, Srila Prabhupada describes, the real problems. People are misunderstanding what the problems are. Now, the real problem is life. in life is that I take birth in this material world. Eventually I become old and diseased and I'm forced to die. These are the real problems. Human life is an opportunity to solve these problems. If the university, college, was so advanced, why haven't they taught? Why is there not a department for becoming free from the real problems of life? No, how to, no matter how much they endeavor to solve these problems, they're never solved. We see big, big hospitals are being made. But does that mean that now there's no disease? No. If there was 
No disease. Why? More and more hospitals are coming. New diseases are coming. So, ending disease is only possible by coming to the platform of knowledge, transcendental knowledge. And Krishna, out of his immense kindness, kindness, he comes to the material world, he displays his transcendental pastimes that are not ethical stories. They're not imaginary uh, stories that people put together just so that people act ethically and have a psychological comfort that this, how, this is how things happen. No, it's not like that. We understand from the Acharyas. Krishna came 5,000 years ago. He had 16,108 wives. And why not? It may be out of the purview of our experience, but what is our experience? We are conditioned. We can't even remember what we did yesterday at the same time. We forget. Because we're conditioned souls, imperfect senses. But yet, even though we have imperfect senses, even though we are conditioned souls, Still, we're trying to use our imperfection, our imperfect senses, in understanding the Supreme. It's not possible. Prabhupada gives the example of the frog in the well. The frog living in the well gets visited by another frog who's seen the great Pacific Ocean. And he explains to the frog in the well, oh, the ocean is very big. So the frog who has no experience outside of his well begins to imagine, oh, so that the ocean is this big? He said, no, no, it's much bigger than that. Well, then is it this big? And the frog continues to with his own experience, puff himself up this big, this big, and finally he burst. So no one can understand by their imperfect senses in the conditioned state about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the Lord sends his representative in the form of the spiritual master who has already understood the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Lord's uh, pastimes are transcendental. And by hearing from such a person, one can develop faith. And by that faith, one can understand who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the spiritual master, he gives sambandha gyan. He gives knowledge of Krishna and the greatness of Krishna. Without understanding the greatness of Krishna, how will under, one understand these pastimes, these intimate pastimes of Krishna in Dwarka or Vrindavan? The Lord's interaction with his devotees in Dwarka, and especially the Lord's interaction with his devotees in Vrindavan, cannot be understood by the conditioned soul. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada very much was not in favor of the Bhagavat Saptaha. Hear Bhagavatam for seven days. Rather, Bhagavatam says, Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya. That Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya means that one should regularly, daily, hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Then one will be able to understand. In seven days, what will one understand? Not only seven days, but foolishly, they jump to the pastimes of Krishna and Vrindavan, the Ras Lila. Everyone is very much interested to hear Ras Lila, Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. 
Once Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he held a discourses in the Radha Kund on Ishopanishads. So the first day, many Babas from Radha Kund, they came to hear Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur speak. And the second day, they didn't come. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur asked the devotees why the Babas didn't come. <clears throat> and they said that the Babas, they're not very much interested in the Upanishads. They want to hear Leela. Leela. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that they don't live in Radha Kund, they live in Narakund. First qualification is one should be ready to hear. The Upanishads uh, are the foundation for understanding the glories of the Lord. Without that foundation, one is bound to make a misunderstanding. So many Babas living uh, in Radha Kund and in Vrindavan, they don't know what is the nature of Krishna. What are the nature of Krishna's pastimes? They misunderstand and they mislead others. They are sahajas, prakrita sahajas. That, uh, <clears throat> yes, I'm a great devotee and they're keeping so many girlfriends imitating the Krishna's pastimes. So there, one has to be very careful in Vrindavan. When we went to Vrindavan for the first time, uh, Srila Prabhupada explained, don't go outside the walls of the Krishna Balaram Mandir. And I used to think, why is that? Right? So many Leela Stalis are there, why should we only have to stay? But I saw later, that devotees that went to Radha Kund and here and there, they all became confused by the association of uh, the locals, different persons, confused. So many Mayavadis living in Vrindavan and they're taking the name Radhe, Radhe. They don't even know that Krishna is a person. And the ultimate issue they think is Nirakar. Oneness, light. But yet they're showing Tilak and talking Krishna's pastimes. So one has to be careful. The devotional creeper given by the spiritual master it comes up, but it's very tender and very delicate. And along with the creeper that um, comes, planted, the bhakti lat, the beej, by the spiritual master, so many weeds can come also. And these weeds, they need to be removed. Just like in a garden, you have some plant but if you don't remove the weeds, the weeds grow faster and stronger and they choke up the plant. So the gardener has to be very careful to remove all the weeds around the plant so that the plant can nicely grow. In the same way, the devotional creeper, the bhakti lot the beach, comes up, the plant begins to grow. But along with it, so many unwanted plants are also growing. Like the desire for liberation, the desire for material happiness, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth, a lack of faith in Krishna, a lack of faith in Krishna's pastimes, these things also grow. So the aspirant devotee must be very alert. 
must be very cautious in making sure that these unwanted plants that grow up along with the kripa are removed. To remove the desire. You may be in a spiritual movement, a spiritual organization. You may have your tilak on. You may have your japa mala. But if you're not attentive in weeding the garden where the creeper of devotional service is growing, you may get stunted. It's just like the creeper becomes stunted by so much weeds. So our growth in bhakti can be stunted by so many weeds. In chanting the holy name, there's offenses to be considered while chanting. In the worship of the deity, there's offenses to be considered. That's Nama Parad, Seva Parad, Vaishnava Parad. All of these uh, processes must be carefully performed in order for one to come to the ultimate goal so that one can understand. Krishna is having 16,108 wives. And Krishna in each place, Krishna is having different uh, <coughs> activities. As in this verse, he's riding horses, laying on his bedstead. In another place, he's playing chess with his wife, playing with children. Not mistake it. In the material world, everything is an imitation of Krishna. I'll have my <coughs> family and I'll be happy in this material world. As long as we have this mentality, we're destined never to be happy. The mentality should be that I'm not this body. This body is a Bhumir Apo Nalovayu, the Panch Mahabhut, separate from me. I'm the eternal spirit soul. And as an eternal spirit soul, my duty is to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If I do that, then I can become happy. As long as I'm trying to satisfy the senses of this body, either grossly through what I can taste and hear and see and feel and touch are subtly uh, thinking that I'm very powerful or I have a big position. Uh, one never will be happy, never will be satisfied. So devotional service is a tapasya. It's a tapasya. Why? Because our natural proclivity, being conditioned souls, is to try to enjoy in this material world. It's natural. It just comes. Right? You don't know, you don't have to have a PhD, right, to be attracted to young ladies. Neither the, uh, neither the young ladies need a very uh, high educational certificate to become attracted to young men. It just happens. Right? People are attracted by sinful activities. Human life means regulation. That attraction is there for intoxication, gambling. If there's no attraction for gambling, how, do, how come every day they sell millions of lottery tickets? Every day. The attraction is there. So devotional service means to deny that attraction and channel our energy in serving the Lord. Therefore, tapo, tapasya. But this is tapo divyam. It's transcendental. Maya, of course, is very difficult to overcome. Duratya, Krishna says, very difficult. 
But devotional service is very powerful. If one makes the effort to try to overcome the natural proclivities of sinful life in this Kali Yuga, Krishna is there to help. Maya is powerful, but Maya is not more powerful than Krishna. Prabhupada says, if we keep ourselves fixed up in Krishna, then Maya cannot touch us. So it requires association with devotees. It requires this much determination to form the tapasya of avoiding sinful activities. And then we can expect the result. And the result will be that we have firm faith. Yes, Krishna is God. And Krishna had 16,108 wives. And why not? If he wanted, he could have a million wives. No difficulty at all for Krishna. This is the mentality of the purity of the Lord. And this is mm, human life not animal life. So as we read these pastimes of Krishna, uh, we can understand our, we can gauge our position in devotional service by how much faith we have. And by hearing these pastimes, we can become purified so that we can make further progress in devotional service. Are there any questions? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you Prabhu for the nice class. Prabhu, there are two questions. Uh, one is that you said that devotional service is a tapasya, where we have to channelize our attraction to these sinful activities towards devotional service to Krishna. So, can you elaborate how this be, like how this channelization will be done? We have this material body. And therefore, due to ignorance, we are thinking, I am this body. And one person's thinking, I'm Indian. Another person's thinking, I'm American, I'm Russian. Right? But that is illusion. And due to that illusion, we are also thinking that uh, somehow or another, I need to enjoy this body. And that by enjoying this body, I'll become happy. Right? Whatever body it is, doesn't matter. Whether it's human body or pig's body. Right? The bodies are different but the activities are the same the human being uh, likes to eat um, rasgulla or halava and the pig will eating stool right? that eating business is the same but from the human being the human platform we're seeing that this is degraded life. But the pig is very happy. Huh? In pig life, we see in Vrindavan the sur. They're running here and there. They're uh, laying in the mud hole, eating stool, right? We don't see so many pigs here in Vrindavan. I mean, in Jew, Bombay, Juhu. At least not the four-legged ones. But what's the difference? Whether four legs or two legs. If life means eating, having sex, if that's the goal of life, then what's the difference, Bhagavatam says? This enjoyment of sex is there even for the pig. He's also enjoying sex life. He's also, they're also having children. If having a family is a goal of life, 
then pigs are better than human beings. Why? Well, you have one kid, or maybe two. At one time, they have six. So that way, pigs are procreation is much more advanced, if that's the goal of life. But it's not the goal of life. These enjoyments are there available, Rishab Dave tells his 100 sons, even for the Vid Bhujan. Vid Bhujan means two liters. People are very fond of keeping that dog. But what is a dog? The dog is Vid Bhujan, right in the same category as the pig. Huh? I don't know. Hopefully nobody here had dog in their house. I don't know. Right? But we in my family, we had a dog. And I used to always think, well, why is the dog so attracted to the toilet, you know? Goes and drinks out of the toilet. Because that's their nature. They're vidbujan. And people are keeping them in their house nicely, the dog. You know, the dog sweats through the tongue. Right? The dog sweats through the tongue. So when they're in the house, they're leaving their saliva here and there all over the house. And the ho household, the people that live in the house, they come in contact with that saliva. So if you come in contact with the saliva of another living entity, you'll take on that mentality. Huh? That's why the devotees of the Lord are interested to take the remnants of the Mahabhagavat. Because by those remnants, you'll become purified. Your consciousness will change. But what will happen if you are come in contact with the remnants of the dog? So the tradition is, the dogs have their place. In the village, they warn the villagers if any tiger is coming or some uh, uh, thief, chor, they have. And, they, and they're also fed because they have their place. Uh, but they're not kept in the house. Because we have to in, do those things which will elevate our consciousness, not degrade our consciousness. We keep association with devotees of the Lord. We take the remnants of the Lord's pure devotee and the Lord's prasadam so that we elevate our consciousness. No, people are not interested to get up in the morning. They like to sleep in the morning. Right? When I was traveling in Maharashtra, they had, I learned a saying there. In Maharashtra, they have the saying that sleeping early in the morning is parama anand. Early morning sleeping. But no, one gets up early morning and chants, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram. And this is tapo. But it's transcendental. It's not for any material purpose. If you're performing austerity for some material purpose, it may be tapasya, but it's not tapo divyam. Tapo divyam. Lord Rishabdev advised his sons, you perform this tapasya. It's not such a great thing. Not, you don't have to sit in the sun and chant. You don't have to sit in the freezing cold lake in the Himalayas and chant. Right? But you have to come to the temple early morning, take a bath, come and sit in the temple and chant. That much tapasya one can do. But it's required. Otherwise we'll stay in the category of hogs and dogs camels and asses, and simply waste this uh, precious, rarely gotten human form of life. Yes?
Hare Krishna Bhaji. Could you mention that how while uh, our Bhakti Lata grows, with that beats also grows, like material desires or and others. So when we grow, when we spend time uh, render devotional service, we feel that my bhakti is growing. But how we I identify that the weeds are growing? That's why one needs to be receptive to the feedback that Krishna is giving. Krishna lets us know, you know, um, in various ways that we have to learn something. We've not learned yet. Let's say I want some particular service or I want some particular uh, position. Right? It's not coming. Krishna is trying to teach us that's not good for you. But we're not learning. Right? If I have the, it could be that if I have that position, I'll become with, filled with so much ahankar. I'll mistreat other devotees, or I'm already mistreating other devotees. So Krishna gives lessons. And if the same thing's coming, happening again and again, it's because we didn't learn. No one should think we're very smart, that we'll figure it all out on our own. If we were so smart, then how come we got a material body? Huh? You may be PhD, but you're a duffer number one because you have a material body. You failed the test in the last life to remember Krishna and go back to the spiritual world. Simple thing, it appears. Right? So staying in association with the devotees is a prerequisite. Because only the devotees will be able to tell you, Prabhuji, you're in Maya. And if we're receptive to that uh, feedback, what does Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthat Thakur say? The person that criticizes you is what? Huh? Say it louder. And we're thinking, Are? Badmash, I sabat karte mere maare me. Then, how far off are we from the goal? How illusioned are we? No? These things that the uh, acharyas are explaining to us, and they're for us to learn. Not that it's just some imaginary thing. Right? We have to learn. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami says, you take this verse, you make it in a necklace, and you wear it around your neck. But we have another necklace. We wear it around your neck. I'm a great devotee. Everyone should respect me. I should be first in line. I should have this facility. I should have that facility. Where is the Trinada Pisunice now? What happened? What happened? Right? We become diverted. In devotional service, chanting Hare Krishna and going in the opposite direction. That chanting is the watering of the kripa. But if you don't pull out the weeds, then what happens? You water the weeds. And if the weeds, see weeds, they grow better, they grow faster than plants. If you ever have a garden, you're putting water on the flowers, but the weeds are growing faster and faster. And they choke out the plant. So if, as devotees, if we don't see this false ego, and desire for sense gratification. Ultimately, it's all sex desire in subtle forms. La, puja, pratista. It's all subtle form of sex desire. So if you don't weed it out, it'll overcome the kripa. And what you'll have is 
your watering process is watering the weeds. You think, I'm really advancing in devotional service. I'm chanting. But what are you doing? You're putting water on the ahankar. So a devotee has to be very careful, very cautious, and be receptive to what Krishna is trying to teach me. Right? Don't think you're great. If we think, I know everything. I, I've been in the movement 50 years. I know everything. I know all the devotees. All the devotees know me. I have a big position. But when you chant, a tear come to your eyes? Right? Does your voice become choked up when you chant? Then who are you? Where are you in devotional service? Nowhere. So why should I become falsely proud? Remain humble. Remain simple. And fixed in devotional service. Then it will be possible to remove the weeds. Nurture the creeper. The creeper will grow and grow and grow. It will take shelter in the spiritual world. And it will create flowers and fruits at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other questions, comments? Hanuman, Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Mike is behind Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, I have one comment, Prabhu, that once uh, uh, Indra made some mistake and a great Rishi cursed him to become a pig, then he became a pig in Bharat worship. And um, he had dozens of children, and he was happy. And the time of curse was finished. But uh, still he was not coming back to heaven to take care of the, his position. Then Lord Brahma came down and uh, t told him that you come back now, your curse time is finished. But he is not uh, coming. So then Brahma killed his wife and children. Then he came to sense that I have to come back and take care of my service at, at uh, heavenly plants. Yes, so Krishna is going to do the same thing for us. All our little pigs and piglets, by the time and the influence of time, they'll all be killed. Don't worry. We won't be so fortunate that Lord Brahma will come, but time factor will come. All these things will be wiped away. It's time is coming. So in the interim, we should chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Chimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Nitaigo Premanandi.